This is my videotape robot. And before I get into any technical details, I'm going to give you the backstory to give you some context as to why a person would create a robot that switches and plays videotapes. Ever since I saw the movie Hackers in the mid-90s, I always wanted my own TV station to play videotapes on. And it was all because of the scene where Zero Cool is taking over a TV station and making the tape bot play whatever he wants as he fights with Acid Burn. And, of course, if you haven't seen that movie, I definitely recommend checking it out. Not just to get a better idea of how the tape bot works, but overall it's just a good corny 90s movie. I think we got a hacker. But the tape bot part was easily my favorite part, and it really stuck with me. So, in 2017, I started a Twitch channel called Videotapes Online, and we began playing live, not pre-captured, VHS tapes. Mostly movies but occasionally we'd play found tapes and recordings from tv and we pretty much had that going on every night at least one or two movies a night if not more um, but one night i was visiting a friend's house and watching my channel at their house while my vhs tape played at my house and i was thinking wouldn't that be great if i could switch the movie the tape remotely so i could continue to hang out here and not have to go home to switch tapes i've got to return some video tape Back to the tape bot from Hackers, I always assumed the tapes they used were standard consumer VHS tapes, but after I got a 1080p copy, Blu-ray copy of the movie, and spliced all the tape bot scenes together and reduced the speed to a crawl, I began to notice some interesting things. Most notably was that they weren't using VHS tapes. They're using U-Matic, and that's a format that came out in the 70s and was used through the 90s. So my bot doesn't use U-Matic tapes. Um, it's not a one-to-one -one replica or anything like that. But it does actually use a lot of the key elements that the tape bot from Hackers used. Except I had to scale them down because U-Matic tapes are a little bit bigger than VHS tapes. And also I don't have hundreds of tapes. I only have 10. And that's really all I need for what I'm doing anyway. The key elements that I used from the Hackers bot were mostly the pneumatic parts, which are the extender, the gripper and the pusher. The extender is made by SMC, the same company that did the one in the hacker spot, and it's a double acting cylinder. And a double acting cylinder just uses two airlines to extend or retract the cylinder. Uh, then they have the gripper, which is the same, almost the same series anyway, as the one that was used in Hackers. It's just a little bit smaller because, like I said, U-Matic tapes are a little bit bigger. They're thicker. Uh, but finally, we have the pusher, and that is a single acting pneumatic cylinder and that just uses one airline to push the cylinder out and then it automatically retracts backwards so there's no airline needed for that it just springs back into place so i'm going to assume the tape bot and hackers was just a prop because i couldn't find any information on it i did find something similar called the sony flexi cart it's probably smaller than the perceived size of the bot and hackers but it essentially does the same thing. It takes a tape from a row of tapes and then it sticks it in a player. And it does so with servos or stepper motors instead of pneumatics. It has like a rack and pinion system to go forward and backwards and side to side. So it's got a, actually a bigger range of motion than the pneumatics do. But back to my tape bot design, I use the pneumatics and I don't necessarily regret the decision, but they kind of have a limited range of motion. It's either on or off. And while you can control that and get good feedback from sensors, it's just not the best solution, I don't think. And going forward, I will probably at least replace the extender drive with a servo or stepper motor just to get better control over the motion. I had quite a few crashes with the extender and even at a low PSI when it crashes into the frame it makes it flex and bend a little bit. Whoops. And that's something I think that could be avoided with a stepper motor and collision detection. 
One thing I did use from the Sony FlexiCart design was the cantilevered linear rail and belt drive system. I really like that design for this and I happen to have a nice section of 25 millimeter linear rail and some 15 millimeter GT belts and pulleys. So that was an easy fit. For the up and down Z axis I used a hybrid stepper motor which is pretty much like a regular stepper motor but it has an encoder inside and the holding torque is what I was actually after because the gantry is somewhat heavy and I didn't want the stepper motor to get hot while it was moving up and down or holding in place and the hybrid stepper is just perfect for that. For the motion control system I'm using Fluid NC which is an ESP32 port of Gerbil more or less. It was actually started out as ESP32 Gerbil and then got renamed to Fluid NC after some more features were added. One cool feature of Fluid NC and the main selling point is that it has Telnet built in so I can send G-code commands from my custom C-sharp program to the Fluid NC board over Telnet and it just works. Every feature that I want, every macro, anything that uses G-code can be controlled remotely over Wi-Fi and that was a feature that sealed the deal for me. As far as the metal parts go, I cut some of the gantry parts out of aluminum on my home-built CNC mill or router and I got a lot of the other parts done that way but the majority of the parts were done through sincutsin.com which is a website where you can upload any kind of vector file, CAD file. I used Illustrator because that's my poor man's CAD which I use for 2D stuff. I use Fusion 360 for any kind of 3D stuff and Illustrator for 2D stuff. But anyway, you upload the files and they usually get it back to you within a week or so. Um, I think my total was $80 but you can spend as little as $30. That's their minimum. And that does include shipping. So it's really a pretty good deal. And I highly recommend them. I would definitely use them again for really precise laser cut parts. Like I said earlier, I had a Twitch channel called Videotapes Online. And that was the main reason why I created this. And since I've moved to something called Owncast, which is software you install on a Linux server. It can be an external server outside of your home or inside of your home. I just have mine inside my house and we watch movies on that server. Basically it's like Twitch, almost exactly like Twitch, but it's totally free and they don't censor you, which was the main problem that I had with Twitch. That and the bandwidth issues. I don't have any bandwidth issues with Owncast. Highly recommend checking that software out. The other use that would be really good for this tape bot is archiving videotapes. The Sony Flexi cards I was talking about earlier are actually still used, but mostly just by larger corporations and companies that can actually afford them. I think they're upwards of $20,000 or more with the new software that they use to archive, and that's just prohibitively expensive for most people. I think I spent maybe 400 or $500 total on my build. And obviously that's not including hours, but that's still a tiny fraction of 20000 or more dollars. I definitely plan on open sourcing the project and developing it further. I'd really like to get it automated so the archival process is really just turnkey. Um, I know it's not going to be quite that simple, but that's the plan. Um, I've spoken to several people at archive.org, some of whom are involved with the Marion Stokes Project, which is a massive library of tapes that this woman named Marion Stokes recorded over 30 years or 40 years or something. And she died and left archive.org, the entire collection. I think it's close to 70,000 tapes or so. It's a massive amount. But they're just going tape by tape on the transfers. So I think my bot could definitely help them speed up their process and get more tapes captured. And that's one of the big goals that I have with this project. The other big goal is archiving my collection of around 3,000 tapes. A lot of them aren't super rare or anything, but I do have some movies that were recorded from TV, TV shows that were recorded, and I have a bunch of movies that were never released on DVD or Blu-ray, so VHS is the only way to see them. 
And if you think you might be able to use this bot for archival or any of the other purposes you might be able to come up with, comment below and let me know what you want to use it for. I definitely plan on doing more videos, and one of those videos is going to be on the luggable cyber deck that I built. I used it in this video to control the tape bot, but I built it in 2021, and I just never got around to making a video for it. So that's something I'm definitely looking forward to doing. This part is part one of a multi-part series, so if you want to see more videos with technical details and other good stuff, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you can actually see when my videos come out.